one of the commonly used way to determine the pre-consolidation pressure is the Casagrandis procedure. So this is a graphic procedure that you can use to determine sigma C prime, the pre-consolidation pressure from your lab, lab E versus log sigma prime curve. So I'm going to use this hypothetical E log sigma prime curve to illustrate this procedure. So the first step in this uh, Casagrandis procedure is to uh, establish the point of minimum radius of curvature. So that is shown as point A. So do this by visual inspection. So this is, this is a point where the curve changes the slope the most. The next step is to draw a horizontal line from point A. So we call this line AB. Then draw a line AC, which is tangent to the curve at point A. So step four is to draw the line AD. So this line AD bisects the angle BCA. So you have this equal angle alpha here. The next step is to extend the straight line portion of the loading curve back to intersect line AD. And this intersection point we call point F. So this intersection point F gives us the best estimate of the pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime. In addition to the Casagrandi's graphical procedure, there are also empirical correlations that you can use to determine the pre-consolidation pressure sigma C prime. And one such example is given on this slide where the uh, liquidity index Li is used to estimate pre-consolidation pressure. And recall the definition of liquidity index Li is the water uh, moisture water content uh, omega minus plastic limit PL over liquid limit LL minus PL. So we have introduced this concept of pre-consolidation pressure we call sigma C prime, which is basically the maximum effective stress the clay has ever experienced. And if we call the present effective stress in the clay sigma P prime, and depending on the relationship between these two stresses, we can classify clay as normally consolidated or overly consolidated. So normally consolidated clays uh, have sigma p prime equal to sigma c prime. So basically your present effective stress is the maximum the clay has ever experienced. And for overly consolidated clays or OC clays, sigma p prime is smaller than sigma c prime. Furthermore, we can define this over consolidation ratio uh, we call OCR, which is defined as the ratio between pre-consolidation pressure sigma c prime and the present effective stress we call sigma p prime. So if OCR is equal to one, this means the clay is NC or normally consolidated clay. If OCR is greater than one, that means the clay is OC clay, overly consolidated clay. Now we have talked about the concept of normally consolidated and overly consolidated clays. Uh, so this slide summarizes some of the common reasons of soil being over consolidated. So the first one is there were previous structures and soil layers on top. And if those were removed, uh, that reduces the effective stress and leading to soil being overly consolidated. And the second one is uh, there were glacier on top, which is pretty common in the northern part of the, U, uh, the country in the past. So if those glaciers were melted, that also reduces uh, the effective stress and resulting soil being overly consolidated. Third one uh, relates to the changing water table. So this is something we discussed back in chapter nine. So if you had a lower water table in the past, the effective stress in the soil is actually, uh, was actually higher in the past. Again, that's uh, leading, that leads to soil being over consolidated. And the fourth one is desiccation, the loss of moisture content. And finally, weathering of soil layers on top also 
can lead to over-consolidating soils.